Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. <clears throat> Alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. A reading from Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gate in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me in the beginning of his work the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm skies, made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. This morning we will read Psalm 8, responsibly by whole verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. You quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have attained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I was here about two or three weeks ago, and uh, after the church service, I walked down the aisle, and Father Tom looked at me and said something about um, that my theology was more orthodox than his. Now, I don't know whether that was a compliment or not, but I thought today, since it was Trinity Sunday, and when I had curates, I would always make one of the curates do the sermon for Trinity Sunday to see how much unorthodox things they could come out with. So I have prepared a little, Father, would you like to have a little pad of paper to take care of my notes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so nice to have a friend. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How on earth do you explain a mystery? You know, how would you in your own family, to your own children, or maybe to, if you're a child, to your parents or something, how would you explain a mystery. Now, we all love mystery books, and we all like to watch mystery movies and things like that. But after it's all over with, yeah, it was a pretty good story and so forth. But have we ever asked ourselves, what on earth is a mystery? What intrigued me so much about that movie or that TV show or that, that book that I read? You know, what is a mystery? What is a mystery? Many years ago, Albert Einstein once wrote, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and true science. Think about that for a moment. Thank you, Dr. Einstein. But how would you explain that beautiful experience today when it's Trinity Sunday? Okay, Dr. Einstein, I want you to explain to me the Trinity. I'm sorry he's not around. I'd love to hear what he would say. Some time ago, I read Dan Brown's book, The Lost Symbol. Has anybody ever read Dan Brown's Lost Symbol? Oh, good. Okay. Because it's all about Washington, D.C. and National Cathedral and so forth. And, you know, I used to go visit my uncle who was only a couple of blocks away. And it, it was sort of, my golly, it's sort of like taking me home, you know. Um, a lot of the loose ends in that book got tied up in that closing chapter. But even then, you were still left with that gnawing feeling that something else was going to happen just around the corner. I closed the book, and I thought, OK, there's got to be something else that's going to go on here. And I missed it. So I, I, I warn you, if you pick up that book and read it, you, you might have the same situation going on inside you. Because there was still a hazy cloud that was hovering over things that might even confuse the angels. 
If you go around Washington Cathedral and you look and you see all the angels, you wonder if they're kind of scratching their heads or scratching their wings or something, saying, hmm, what's that really all about? I suspect all of us live with unexplained mysteries, suspicion that things haven't really been sorted out, that really is so much a part of our everyday life and we just haven't really gotten around to it. Uh, my daughter was up visiting me from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and she had just gotten back from South Africa, two weeks in South Africa. And she told me stories about where she'd been, what she'd done, and the people that she and her husband were working with to get ready for him to take his students to Africa to work at the national parks and so forth. And when she got all through, okay, Cheryl, what else are you going to tell me about your trip that you really don't want me to know? All you want me to do is worry about it. So we have all those things going on in our lives that we don't get everything sorted out. Now, if such is true about earthly things, how then are we to work our way through things heavenly? And so I guess that leaves us with an opportunity. An opportunity to stretch our hearts and to stretch our minds as we explore the mysterious depths of the Trinity. And I believe it is a beautiful experience even if we can't explain it all. So thank you, Dr. Einstein, once again. And here we are on Trinity Sunday trying to do the same thing, explain it, or at least touch on it, and so forth. We have a two-week-old infant in church at 8 o'clock, and I look back, and sure enough, the sermon had put her straight to sleep. Um, if you all nod off, that's okay. <laughs> Here it is, Trinity Sunday, 2022. And as in the past, God has revealed himself once again in our lessons as three distinct persons, one God in three distinct persons, or as stated in classical theology, three persona in one ousia. And if you want a translation, just ask Father Tom. I love to put him on the spot. Most folks come to believe that Trinitarian theology only arrived during the early days of Christianity. Well, that's not exactly the case. Even though the basic formulas did come during the period of searching for new understanding of God in the person of Jesus the Christ. When you closely read the Old Testament, because that's where we're going to begin, you will find the foundations of Trinitarian thought in the Old Testament. In the very beginning, we find God's spirit brooding over the waters, and there's no form. It's just God brooding over these waters. And then God, the Creator, speaks the Word who is the creative agent. That's what word is all about there, the creative agent of God. And look what happens. Life of every kind takes shape, even human existence. Now, if we go quite a few steps further, God moves his chosen people out of Egypt, and his presence and glory provide a smokescreen by day and a lighthouse by night as the children of Israel are led out of servitude in Egypt. And then God gives Moses and the Hebrew people guidelines for living outside of Egypt. Guidelines that are still in place today. They're called the Ten Commandments. Here is God moving back and forth, back and forth. Here is God who enables human beings to see him in his kingly power as well as in an intimate and caring being. When we read those stories, here is unapproachable holiness, fire on the mountain, flame, smoke, thundering. 
Here is unapproachable holiness. But most strongly, here is touchable and personal self-giving. Moses, get up here. I want to talk to you. That's pretty personal. Now look at our first reading for today. And there we find transcendence and imminence, which are very obvious. And it's called wisdom. Here is where transcendence and imminence meet. Unapproachable holiness, yet touchable and personable self-giving. And it's called wisdom. What is wisdom? We read that it's God's handmaid in creation. That's what we read. The firstborn of God's work. You want to put a name to it in today's terminology. He's God's chief of staff. But mostly it's God's delight. God's delight. But putting that into it gets a little tricky here because it's easy to confuse this revelation of God with the second person of the Trinity. But you've got to separate it because the key is to remember that Jesus was from the beginning. He, not she, already was when wisdom came on the scene. It was though not by wisdom that God created the human race. And now this is where you and I enter the picture. To embrace wisdom is God's way that humans discover what it really means to be human. By embracing wisdom, we are enabled to reflect on God's w image, and then God's wisdom guides us through the maze and the pitfalls of life. When we fall and stumble, yes, Jesus is there, but it's the wisdom of God that begins to pull us off the ground. And that's what Jesus is asking us to encounter and take into ourselves as we move through this season of Pentecost, which is a, pen, a season of personal introspection. How does God, through whom all things came to be, get lost in all this embracing and encountering what has happened to his role in creation and human life? Well, that's what the early Christians had to ferret out. How do you explain the relationship between the Father Creator, the Son and Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who empowers the church and individual believers? One person, yet three persona. How do we get all that done? If we read carefully and think creatively, we discover that wisdom was God's blueprint for creating you and me. Now remember, to embrace wisdom is to embrace what being human is all about. It helps us understand, hopefully, what's going on. In the act of God taking human flesh in the person of Jesus, the blueprint of what human life should be is firmly in place. What are you and I to look like? We are to look like Jesus, to reach and touch and love and care. If we think about that, we can hear St. Paul this morning telling us that God is saving us and recreating us to be truly human through the grace brought us by Jesus. We are being redrawn according to wisdom's blueprint that is perfect in Jesus Christ. Like Jesus, God's personal presence and glory in our lives is enabling the work of Jesus, the perfect example of what human life should be, to operate within us. Human life that brings healing and hope and peace through the powerful working of God's Holy Spirit. That's going to happen to us this morning when we take Christ inside of ourselves in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Congratulations. 
you have just coursed your way through Theology 101, 102, and there are gold stars in the back of the church that you could put on your forehead when you go up. <laughs> I think right now that that is about as much of the mystery of the Holy Trinity that we can manage in one sitting. But I would like to leave you with a thought or two on top of all of that theology. We can think about God in a simple and uncomplicated way, as a lot of folks do. Oh, it's God, you know. Blah, blah. And then they really take a look at what that theology is urging them to do as corporate members of the church and what Jesus wants them to do and so forth. And you know what happens? They think about it. I don't want any of that. They discard the church and then strive and become part of the latest fad belief. And you could name it all. Instead, however, we Episcopalians can live and rejoice in this mystery of the, twini of the Trinity, which really is beautiful. Yes, we're mystified. And so we're mystified that God loves us enough to send his son to die for us. How beautiful can love be? We're mystified that God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work of Jesus in this world. We can actually do God's work in his name. What could be more beautiful than that? At 8 o'clock, we had a two-week-old infant brought about by love. Two people who love each other deeply. One of whom I've known when she was as little as the little infant she was holding. She was that little when I came to the cathedral in Eau Claire. How much more beautiful can there be than the life of love that brought that new life of love into being? We're even more mystified, however, that God wants you and me to be with him for all eternity when we so often want to shut him out and shut others outside the door of our hearts. And in our own sinfulness, we do that so often. But still, God loves us enough to forgive us so that he and you and me can be together for all eternity. William Willimon wrote, uh, once wrote, we believe in the Trinity because we have been encountered by the Trinity, transformed by a power greater than ourselves, loved by a love greater than our love, embraced by a God who is so large, so rich, so close to us, that we could never, ever have thought this God up all by ourselves. Since this is our holy portion, by living into this beautiful experience, we find that we can gain a great deal of peace because we know that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit not only lives all around us, but he lives in us and he lives through us. And that through this living relationship with God, we discover healing, hope, and peace. We discover that healing, hope, and peace flow into our lives and many times, healing, hope, and peace flow from our lives 
into the lives of others. So isn't this fulfilling blueprint that God's delightful wisdom drew up for you and for me and indeed for all human beings? How much more beautiful and loving can there be other than knowing that God lives in us and that we can experience that love and we can take that love and experience out into the world so that the whole world will know what love is all about. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father to the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, page 387. We'll pray first for our parish family. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop, Father Mike, our rector, and Father Kirby. We pray for our parish families, especially Mark, Ann, Sid, and Salem, Mike and Jeannie, Melissa and Gary, Martin, Tiffany, Peter, and William, and Mary Larson. And we pray for those celebrating birthdays, especially Bob, Jake, Mindy, Jane, Katie, Carol, Linda, and the anniversary of Peter and Tiffany and Chris and Cheryl. We also pray for Joe, our president, Tony, our governor, and Mitch, our mayor. And we pray for healing and comfort, especially for Ann, Ann, Burley, Dan and Donna, Dick, Ed, Grace, Joe, Julie, Julie, Catherine, Lynn, Nathaniel, Pat, Pat, Phyllis, Sam, Sue, Steve, and Vivian. And in the Anglican cycle, we pray for the Anglican Church of South America. And in the Eau Claire cycle, we pray for St. Luke's Springbrook. We continue on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. 
that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to Peter Hammond and all of the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. I ask your prayers especially for Bob, who is a resident of the Benedictine Care Facility here in La Crosse, for comfort for his wife. Also, please, play, please pray for Mike Homoloskos, who was ordained priest at the cathedral yesterday in Eau Claire. Almighty God, whose loving hand has created us and given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor him and each other with our substance, and remembering the account which we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of God's bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Let us arise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the peace of Christ. <laughs> David's hiding behind the screen over there. Peace, David. <laughs> be seated for just a moment. Um, don't know of any announcement. Does anybody have anything? for the good of the congregation. Um, we did something at 8 o'clock, and I just let you know what, what we did, because it's not often done. Um, it's called the Churching of Women in the English Church. Here it's the Thanksgiving uh, for a, women, a woman after childbirth or uh, for an adoption, and it's in the prayer book on page 439, um, if you want to look at it sometime. Um, and uh, we have, you have a new family here, uh, Mike and, uh, oh, for God's sake, <laughs> Katie, thank you. <laughs> I, God, I baptized her, I presented her for confirmation, I can't remember her name. But anyhow, um, they just have a two-week-old infant, and uh, Julie, or Isla, Isla June, uh, arrived uh, here in church at 8 o'clock. And we did that Thanksgiving uh, for um, a child after childbirth. And we also used one of the three oils which the church uses at certain things. There is the oil of unction when you're sick and you call for a priest and want to be anointed. He uses oil of unction. And all of these oils are set apart by the bishop. And then, of course, when we are uh, confirmed or ordained and so forth, you are anointed with chrism. The one that doesn't get a lot of uh, 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 talking about or even seeing about is the oil of catechumenorum. And we can anoint newly born infants or people who are not newly born but are getting ready for baptism. 
and it's the oil that the church uses if the people, the people and the person wishes to be anointed uh, before baptism. It's called the oil of catechumenorum. So uh, if somebody says, well, what was that strange thing they did at Christ Church at 8 o'clock? Oh, well, they anointed an infant with oil of catechumenorum. Now, that ought to bring the conversation to a screeching halt. <laughs> but anyway, but that's what we did. Um, no further announcements. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. One liturgical point. After the Feast of Pentecost, the Alleluia is omitted from the Christ our uh, Passover is sacrificed for us uh, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer. Uh, the Alleluia just simply drops off uh, after Pentecost and then picks itself back up at the next Easter season. So I'm going to sing it. Uh, but I'm not going to put the Alleluia on it. And when you sing it back to me, you don't need to put the Alleluia on it. <laughs> I'd say we've got about 20 out there. 25. Oh, calibrated eyeballs. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God. the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the 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 blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of blood of our Lord. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Okay. the bread of heaven.
Let us use this morning the second prayer after communion, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. Be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Before I do the blessing, I owe a, an apology to the organist. We had this long conversation about how to do Christ our Passover, and I said, we'll just say it, and then I sing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, David. Excuse me. <laughs> Go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help and cheer the sick. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. victorious thy great name we praise unresting unhasting and silent as light ne'er wanting nor wasting nor rulest in mind thy justice like mountains I soaring above thy clouds with young mountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest in all life thou livest the true life of all. and adore be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory in heaven, this most blessed sacrament of the altar in his hearts of his faithful people. May the souls of the departed through the rest of God rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Could you put that back on the rector's chair? Okay.